Okay, we're going to continue um, on setting up a Dragon profile, and then I'm going to show you how to um, create a simple command in Dragon, and then um, I'll show you how to import a whole suite of commands. So um, the first step where you do develop a simple command is something you'll have to do to create your um, the data that are categorical or factorial that are codes such as species or sex or uh, categories of maturity and things like that. Uh, the measurements, which are numbers, are already known in Dragon as default, so you don't have to create commands. So the commands are for things that you want to program that are codes in your database. Um, so let me first clean up the screen. So once you set up a profile, even in the new version, it's going to give you a whole bunch of these uh, wizards on tips and things like that. So I don't use the Dragon side. Uh, bar because I want to maximize the screen for the data entry process. Um, so I'm going to close these things. Um, you know, and then so the Dragon has a different, uh, has a floating interface. So right now Dragon is operating. You can see it's up here and also the the form for our data entry is shown here and I'll talk about that in a, in a minute. But uh, I like to have the Dragon toolbar floating. So even in the new version, uh, they have a different interface for Dragon because it's designed for Windows 10. This is um, in Windows 7 currently. I like to have the floating Dragon bar, so it has this minimal profile. And that way you can spend most of your screen footprint on your data entry. And then, you know, you really won't have to interact with Dragon too much in terms of interfacing with the software other than uh, when you're sort programming it, but once you're doing data entry, all you have to really look at is the microphone status. So there's three colors for the microphone status. When it's red, it's completely off, and there's no voice command that can turn it on. And if you just manually click it, the microphone's on. You can see the pulsating. So it's right now trying to transcribe text. So I'm going to shut the mic off. So the accuracy of this can be adjusted. See, it's translating my text, so that's why you can use this in almost any software you have. If you ha already have a canned interface for your data entry, you know this will work well, and I'll talk more about the details of that. So I'm going to shut this off before we go nuts. So now it won't capture. So there's a, there's a standby phase where the microphone's yellow, and that's what you're going to be operating with when you're in the field collecting data in your lab. Um, so let's go over. Um, what the toolbar looks like when you're going to use it. So now it's active. Um, so you have different profiles. You can manage it, but uh, you use one profile at a time. And I create a profile for a specific data entry form, as I uh, And in this case, it'll be our uh, fish biological measurements. And I'll talk about the form in a second. But let's talk about the, uh, the crux of this, the core of what makes Dragon work for um, biological data collection. And it's uh, the command browser. So what um, and this interface is going to differ in the newer versions of Dragon. Um, so what we're dealing with are different scripts and managing the scripts. And so um, these are currently the scripts that come default um, in Dragon. And you know you can speech this, and it'll it'll do different things. And I'll talk about this later. But what, I, what I'm going to demonstrate right now is how to create a command, uh, a simple command. Uh, using two approaches uh, to assign values to that word command. And what I mean by a command is when you're using Dragon, it's translating text. But if you have words that you have programmed, instead of it recording it by letter and spelling out the word, it actually executes some function. And, it, and in our case, it's keystrokes. Or it could execute some function, such as print buttons and things like that, that are in Windows or in the software. But we'll just do a real simple one with a species code. And so when you're creating command, uh, you're going to be in command browser, and then you're going to manage your scripts, and you're going to create a new command. So let's pretend we're going to create a command, and I'm going to create a new species called Klingons, because we're going to collect Klingons in Lake Superior. So what you would do is type it out. Um, and so what you do is create a name for the command. This is ac actually the word you're going to say. And what you first do is train the command. Uh, so you assign your voice profile to that. Um, if you don't do that, it'll try to phonetically spell it out based on some, 
you know average approach or what the system will think it is so this is uh, it may sound different uh, than what you're going to say so you can just force it to uh, execute the command based on your voice and what, how you say it so in this case the uh, it comes up and then uh, when you're ready you hit go and you say it and then you say it's done and if you made a mistake or you pause too long it'll record the pause you can do it again so I'll, I'm going to show you how this is done. Klingon. And that's it. Now, if you made a mistake, you put a pause in, it's going to, it's going to have that in that. So, all right. So these are going to be global. I don't mess with this. Um, you know, I think those of you that are, you know, real active and high end developers can really understand more of this interface. And, um, but I'm just going to show you the two command types that I use to program everything for our data collection. And I think you can these other two for, you know, the same thing. Um, I use step by step, which is basically drop down list approaches to entering keystrokes or um, Windows level commands. And then there's advanced scripting, which is more like a visual basic uh, linear programming format with um, subroutines and things like that. So I'm going to show you the step by step one first for creating a Klingon. And that's going to be my word for lake trout, because I don't want to say lake trout on ship. So this uh, approach of using voice data entry is accommodating to each person's preference as long as the code behind it is standardized to what you have here in the database. So in this entry form, lake trout, and I'm referring to lean lake trout that we're dealing with, it's two letter code is LT. Now in the database, it's stored as 307. Um, those of you that deal with databases will understand. I use numeric codes for all of our categorical information, um, but I have other types of codes that are more intuitive for personnel use. So we're gonna use our field code for lake trout, uh, lean lake trout, which is LT. So step by step. So what we're gonna do, and then to assign the code behind the word Klingon, it's right here. So what we're going to do is insert either keystrokes or type text. Um, keystrokes and text are probably the same thing. So I'm going to just type text and I'm going to hit insert. And, and my database is not case sensitive, but I'm going to just capitalize LT Lake Trout, which really means Lake Trout, uh, lean Lake Trout. We have actually four eco types of Lake Trout, uh, but it's LT. So the way my form is set up, if I say Klingon, it's going to type LT, I want it to tab out of that field because that field for species is already taken care of. And I want the cursor to go into the next field for it to be ready to receive the next measurement. And in this case, in our form, I think it's the, uh, the weight of the fish or the length. Uh, I'll have to look at the form. So what I want to do is also insert a tab. And uh, you can, and it's actually a, considered a keystroke. So I'm going to do that, insert, and I'm going to hit the tab button. I could hit enter also, um, which would be functionally the same. Enter has a slightly different meaning if your form is set up a certain way, but I'm just say, uh, have it type LT, which is for lean lake trout, and press tab. So that will be the end of this command. I'm going to save it. And so here you see our script is in Klingon and this little symbol indicates the type of um, of command it is. So it's a step-by-step, -step, whereas these others, if you click on it, um, I don't know if it's going to open, <laughs> um, those are uh, the script based. So we'll just focus on that. Um, so then you close your command browser. So now this is our data entry form for our surveys on Lake Superior. And these are gillnet surveys where we go out and, and lift the net and catch a whole pile of fish. So this card one is our data for abiotic sampling site information. Um, so in, in this form I developed in Microsoft Access, uh, I already assigned a lift ID number and then the station and all the physical parameters. So we're just gonna go to card three, which is our individual fish measurements. So if the length or anything's measured on a fish, it's in this, uh, field. So there, you can see on this form, these are the different measurements we have for each fish. And there's already one fish populated in this uh, database. And as I mentioned earlier, 
There's two types of measurements in fish surveys. There's actual measurements that are numerical, that are uh, scaled measurements or integer measurements or whatever. And then there's categorical information, which are uh, more like factorial or, uh, or um, categories of information. So species, uh, sex, or maturity, that's what these are. Visceral fat index is actually a measurement scaled from zero to four. And so this is speech then. Um, so what I'm gonna do is show you how we just programmed a uh, Klingon, and that's my word for that same thing, which is species. Klingon. The reason there was an error is because it put a space in because I had the microphone on before I said Klingon. So I'm going to do it again just to uh, how that operates. Klingon. Stop. Okay, um, stop is actually a command I use uh, that I've created that shuts the microphone off. It doesn't recognize it because we just created a new profile and that's not recognized as a command. So it tried to write stop. The default drag and command for microphone go to, uh, to shut down is go to sleep. So I'll show you how that works. Go to sleep. So you can see it's actually in standby mode. So I didn't want to say three words, so I just programmed stop to execute the same thing as go to sleep. So that's how flexible programming commands in this environment is. Um, so what I showed you is a command, how to create a command using any word you want, and it, it typed in a code that you wanted that's specific to your form. So our code is LT. And um, what I'm going to show you next, so that's a step-by-step -step command. Uh, the next uh, part, uh, I will show you how to write a script-based command uh, that can be a little more flexible and can do a bit more.